In this tutorial, we are going to discuss some of the key assets one uses to create an interactive experience and some of the associated properties one uses to configure those assets both visually and how they function. By assets, I mean the images, the videos, the documents, the web browsers, the key components you use to tell your story and share information. I think you'll be surprised at how easy it is to create these interactive experiences. Let's start with an image. I'm going to drag an image into the active scene use my mouse to reposition it and resize it a bit, and then open up the Properties panel and start playing with some of the configuration options. Starting at the top, the key element of the Container and Content categories that allows me to determine how much I want the image to be moved. Default, move it all the time, static, never, pin means you can pin it. The Position, Size, and Orientation category allows me to move and resize my image, and you'll notice the properties are updated in the panel when I manipulate the image or vice versa. The Display Buttons category allows me to determine whether or not to display certain buttons that have various functions, like maximize the image, minimize the image, etc. And I can change how those controls look, both color, uh, radius, whether or not they have a shadow, so I can customize the look and feel of my application to some extent. The Title category allows me to display the title of the file at the bottom of the image if I want to and change how that looks as well. And then the Tools category allows me to, among other things, show the drawing tools. Now we'll take a look at this in greater detail later in the video, but notice I can add different colors, different pen widths, I can show a drawing grid, I can do a lot of things to enable the user to create on-screen annotation at runtime. The next couple of categories are interesting because they allow me to modify the way I can minimize my image. You'll notice that it can start minimized, maximized, or normal, normal being the size I create inside the scene, if I want it to be minimized, I can actually specify what the image looks like when it's minimized and what it looks like when it's minimized and pressed. I can change the size of the minimized image. I can move it to different parts of my screen. Uh, and this enables me to create some really interesting effects. Finally, we can determine whether or not we can rotate, resize, move any of these graphics. Let's see it in action. We would elected to start the image in the minimized state, so I need to touch it to normalize it. Here are all of the different controls we had turned on in the Properties panel. It looks exactly as it does in the editor, as it does here in Play Mode. Uh, and they all work as expected. So if I touch Maximize, Minimize, they maximize and minimize as appropriate. I can continue to move it. And now we get to play with the Drawing tool. I can choose any width, any color that I established in my Properties panel. I can draw directly on the grid. The grid is optional. You don't have to have the grid. I can use my eraser to erase different lines, and I can even pop out a copy so that I can erase my changes in the original, but I still retain a copy of the image with my annotation for later use. Let's think about building a more formal experience now. I'm going to return this image to its normal state and reposition it a bit to make some room for a video I'd like to place in the bottom left. You already know how to do this. You grab a video from the content library, drag it in, position it as you wish, resize it as you wish, and then start modifying properties to customize it uh, so it looks and operates exactly as you wish it to. Here I'm electing to play a loop, but not all to play the video. I want to tell the video to play. And then I'm going to go to the Display Buttons option and turn on some of the same properties I turn on for the image. But rather than doing it manually, I'm going to copy the properties from the image and paste it onto the video. I hope you saw that in the Properties panel. Makes life a lot easier. There are other controls for the video unique to the video. I can show a timeline. I can show sound control. I want to give my users the option to modify those things at runtime. And I'm going to give them the same colors as I have the additional painted properties. Let's see this in action. As you recall, I had set the video to not autoplay. I need to physically push the play button. Then I will adjust the sound and we'll enjoy the video. Split out of here, afterlife kids. Are you a ghost too? I loved Beetlejuice. So there you have it, the use of an image and a video inside an Intuiface experience. Let's now play with a third kind of asset. This is the document asset. I've dragged into my space a PDF file that I have saved in my local file system, and I'm going to use the Copy Painter to copy the properties of the controls directly to my document because I want them to be identical, to have the same look and feel. The next thing I'm going to do is configure how the document looks. Now, by default, it appears as a vertical book, a vertical scroll, which means the pages are up and down. You can see that indicated by the controls at the bottom. An alternative is a horizontal scroll, so you can slide the book left and right to progress from one page to the next. That's okay. My preference is to reproduce a true book format where you actually turn pages. 
So I've set the style property to book and I've resized the book to look more amenable to my display. In play mode, you can see that I can turn the pages. It's a true book. It's exactly how I want it to look. Having seen it in play mode, I've decided, you know what, I want the cover to have a reddish tint as well. And like many other properties, I can select it in the properties panel. You've seen an image, you've seen a video, you've seen a book. Another very popular asset type is the web browser. So I'm going to insert a web browser asset into a brand new space and show you how that can be configured as well. You'll note that when we first add the web browser to our space, it defaults to the Intuiface website. I'm going to copy a URL for the Tim Burton biography and paste it into the home page property of our web browser so that we get the Tim Burton biography in our experience. And now I want to modify some of the properties for this web browser. Should I allow scroll? Should I allow zoom? Should there be a navigation bar? Lots of different properties. I can even define which domains my users should be able to visit as well as modify perhaps the type of keyboard that should be available or how I want some optional controls to appear. The last thing I want to configure is the container that holds this website. If it's static, that means you cannot move it. You can only browse the page and click links. If I set it to pin, you can unpin it, move it around the screen, repin it, and then browse the website. And that's usually the way I like to use my browser. I'm going to create a quick little scenario here where I use a rich text asset to add a title to my scene. And then I'm going to add an audio asset to give a little background music as somebody browses his web browser. For the rich text asset, again, through the properties panel, I can configure multiple aspects of the text, including a font, font size, etc. To insert the audio asset, I'll first show off some of the other asset types we support. There's flash, 3D models, uh, deep zoom images, and Bing maps. We'll insert the audio asset. This allows me to play things like MP3 files to act as background uh, music or narration. And just like the video, I can actually set whether or not I want it to autoplay, whether I want it to loop, and what kind of controls I want to display. And in this case, I want to show both the timeline and the sound control to give the users some flexibility in what they want to hear when they're browsing the website. Finally, I'm going to select the audio file I'd like to play inside this experience. Because I haven't added any audio files to this experience yet, I'm actually going to browse Windows Explorer and select a file I already have installed on my machine. That's all there is to it. Let's start the experience and enjoy the music. Of course, just to state the obvious, I use the mouse in this example. You can use a finger, multiple fingers, to reproduce the same experience. Admit it, all of that was really easy. Well, thanks for watching. See you in the next tutorial.